Yo, I'm Crack, and this is a full comprehensive guide to Duo Consecrated Mind, aka Harpy. In an attempt to keep this guide relevant for as long as possible, a large part of it will be dedicated to how the encounter actually works and how to do that most efficiently. All weapons and loadouts, barring any major changes, should stay somewhat viable for the foreseeable future, however with any major meta shifts feel free to adapt. Much of this duo is preference based and there are a multitude of viable strategies, so feel free to test different ones out and find what works best for you and your teammate. First, we'll start with an overview of some of the mechanics. Though the mechanics for this encounter aren't super difficult, they are integral to doing the encounter efficiently. By far the most important part of this encounter is Mintar spawns. Though in your 6 man LFG runs it seems that the Mintar spawns are somewhat random, they are not RNG at all. Mintar spawns are based on the amount of adds and when adds are killed. If there are too many adds alive, the Mintar will not spawn, so you want to be on top of ad clear. However, in order to quickly spawn a Mintar right after one is killed, you will want to kill around 2-3 to three adds to cause the next one to instantly spawn. You will want to find a balance between killing ads in order to keep the ad count down and also having ads to instantly spawn the next Mentor. Supplicants also do add towards the ad count so keep that in mind as well. The next mechanic mainly applies to the person doing 10 motes and that is delaying the picking up oval tag. When the boss moves and spits you do not need pick it up right away and unlike the first encounter of the raid, delaying the pickup actually has an effect on delaying when the boss spits next, giving the person on 20 modes more time to get back and kill their Mantar. This is very simple and should be done whenever possible. You also want to keep in mind, after depositing your modes, supplicants will spawn about halfway down your lane. As I explained earlier, these want to be killed as quickly as possible in order to allow Mantars to spawn as fast as possible. The last few things aren't actually mechanics, but rather mechanics not working as intended. Ground motes and rock motes can happen when killing a Mentor. Rock motes luckily can either be mount topped or shatter dived out, however, ground motes seem to be completely stuck there. This can cause some very annoying wipes, and it's kind of RNG on this, so you'll kind of just have to deal with that as it's just kind of part of the encounter. Another thing is sometimes when add spawn, near the relay right as the harpy gets down there and despawns them all, some will not actually despawn. This will lead to shielded adds either sacrificing or walking their way to middle, so if you have a random wipe to that, that is why. Most people split the encounter into two rolls, 10 motes and 20 motes, however there are some important tips that apply to both rolls that are very important. First is the use of portals. Portals in between relays are active during this encounter and a lot of people forget about that. They can be used to quickly get to the correct relay. You will mainly want to use these if you are at one of the lanes that are one hop away from the relay. So basically, if you only need to go through one portal to get to where the relay is, it is oftentimes more fast to head down that lane if you are already in it killing your Minotaur. So for example, if I'm killing my Minotaur on 4, and my relay is on 1, it is faster for me to just continue my way down 4 and take the portal rather than head back to middle and then go to 1. However, if you are directly across from the relay, it is often faster to skate directly through the middle rather than using the portals. Also, things like dust field grenades, time barricades, and even solar grenades can allow you to leave your relay faster after depositing. Just throw them at an upcoming group of ads and run back to middle. Dust fields are by far the best for this, but the other options work if you don't have a hunter on 20 modes. Loadouts for the main part of the encounter may vary somewhat depending on what you have or what class you're on, but most are relatively similar and are all built on the same things. The main things that won't change at all is armor mods, a weapon to solo eyes, and eager edge. You will also on every class want two loadouts, one for the main part of the encounter and one for damage. Luckily with the new loadout system this is easier than ever to do and I would highly recommend setting it up before the encounter. With the changes to mods and lightfall special finishers have become both more annoying as well as more convenient depending on what you're doing. Having a way to easily create orbs of power is essential for this encounter now. Siphon mods as well as mods like firepower and heavy handed are easy ways to make consistent orbs. 
This, along with running stacks on stacks and at least one charged up mod, allows you to consistently get enough armor charges to make a good amount of special finishers. You mainly want to do that on 10 modes, however, it is not a bad idea to also run it on 20. By far the most important thing loadout wise is having the raid mod enhanced voltaic ammo collector. You will want to have at least three of them as that is how high it's stacked and is one of the most OP mods in the game. This will create a ton of heavy ammo bricks making it so heavy ammo is pretty much never a problem as well as allowing both players to run eager edge without any issue. This mod is only active while you have the voltaic overflow debuff but you should have it more than enough of the time to get enough heavy ammo. Because of this, weapons with lead from gold are very strong, especially if you are finding that you are having issues with getting enough special finishers for some special ammo. For hunter loadouts, here's an example of a 10 mo loadout. For 10 modes, you will often want to be on a damage super, whether that be golden gun or gathering storm. If you're on solar, you want to be able to swap to nighthawk for damage and pop your golden gun. After you pop it, if you want to get a little bit of extra damage, you can either swap to Dragon Shadow and or Foe Tracer. Using either Lightweight Knife or Weighted Knife with the Radiant Fragment, Proc Radiant, and start damage on the last eye. If on Gathering Storm, when you arrive at the Relay, swap to Star Eaters or run them throughout the encounter, up to you, and get 4x Feast of Light. With only one Hunter, you will most likely want Nighthawk as having access to Radiant is much better and more important now due to loss of high energy fire. You can also proc Ember of Benevolence with the Healing Grenade to give an increase to handling for both you and your teammate. As for 20 motes, if you are newer to the low man, I would highly recommend being on Stasis to Shatter Skate as well as Stull with Dust Field Grenades. The Fragment Whisper of Impetus is amazing for clean double slug rotations and I would highly recommend running it. If you're more confident, you can either use Gathering Storm or Golden Gun, but unless you're going for one phase, this should almost never be needed. As for damage, you will be swapping to one of three options. If you're using first and last out, then you can swap to Bacchus in order to get some extra arc damage after dodging. If you are using the new Root of Nightmare shotgun, you will want to be on either Foe Tracer or Dragon Shadow, using your shuriken to reload during your rotation to hit optimal damage. For Warlocks, both the 10 and 20 mote loadouts are very similar. You will want to be running transversive steps for the main part of the encounter, and then swapping to either Rain of Fire or Ophidians for damage. I would recommend both Warlocks being on Solar, however, you can have 1% on Nova Bomb if you would like. Have at least one person on Ember of Benevolence with healing grenades and you'll be fine. You may find that due to the lack of a strong damage super options for this boss that you may be lacking in damage, but you'll just have to make it up for it with your rotations. For Titans very similar to Warlock, you will both want to be on the same thing, this time on Thunder Crash. For the main encounter, run Doom Marchers for both the improved movement as well as backup add clear with your melee. For damage, swap to Curious, and you can also pop a barricade to act as almost a ghetto dust field grenade to delay. For weapons for the main part of the encounter, I put some examples on screen. Perks like Lead from Gold are strong due to Voltaic mods, so whenever you're able to slap that on on one of your weapons, that's a good idea. You can mix and match these weapons, however, you will always be needing a weapon for eyes, as well as a strong weapon for act clear. Riptide with Lead from Gold is a top tier option, however, you cannot solo eyes with it if it has chill clip, as it will just shatter and break one of the eyes. Heritage as well as as a rapid fire frame sniper like Supremacy or Praetus are also viable options here. In the energy slot, you will want to run either something like Null Composure, Trinity Ghoul, or Wave Frame. This will somewhat depend on what you're using in your connect slot as well as what you're finding that you need most, or just what you have. For damage, traditionally the player on 10 motes is on Izzy Rocket and the person on 20 motes is on Double Slug Tractor due to requiring less heavy ammo. You can swap this up to fit your strengths or you can sacrifice the damage of an Izzy Rocket and replace it with the Linear if you either can't do swaps or don't have access to them. You will want to run appropriate decks, targeting, and search mods for your weapons as well. Examples are going to be shown on screen. Finally, one of the harder part of the encounters is actually starting it. You will want to have one person equip Salvation's Grip and using the spots shown on screen, place the crystals. Some sending emotes like Royal Alignment and Atheon's Throne allow you to extend the tether farther 
making it more forgiving. There are other emotes as well, however those are the two most common ones that I've found people to have. There are a multitude of different spots for crystals, so if you're having a little bit of issues with it, try messing around with it with your teammate, and if you run out of Salvation's ammo, feel free to reload the instance. For the rules, we'll start by explaining 20. 20 melts is commonly considered the carry role for this encounter, as you are able to make up for a large amount of mistakes that your partner may cause. 20 Motes is a fun roll of fast accler, efficient movement, and understanding of how the encounter works. After starting the encounter, find a group of adds and wait for your teammate to call out that they have killed their mantar. Kill your group of adds and then as fast as possible, kill the two mantars that should be spawning getting a total of 10 motes, calling out when your first one is killed. Attempt to spawn the next mantar before getting to the relay as fast as possible. Use diagonal lines and portals to get there as fast as possible, and then deposit. The first deposit is the hardest timing wise for the first phase, so getting it down consistent is key. After depositing, kill any adds that are sacrificing, then look down your lane and attempt to kill as many supplicants as possible. At this time, your teammates should let you know that they are on their way to your relay, and if they got your mantar call, that's even better. When they call it out, throw a dust field at whatever group of adds is closest, and then skate back to the middle. Your mantar should be spawned in already. And if it isn't, that's your partner's fault. You want to attempt to get your first set of most before going and picking up the overflow as it makes timing much, much nicer. Once you have 10 motes, skip back to the relay and deposit. Shoot eyes along with your teammate and do damage. The only difference for second phase for you is that the timing is slightly shifted. The timing to get the initial deposit is less tight, however the timing to get back for the overflow and also get most before is much tighter than before. Damage as well as third phase are the exact same thing as before. Temo, while often called easier, doesn't mean that you just sit there AFK. Temo is going to often carry damage as well as make consistent special ammo drops. Start the encounter by killing the first Mintar and calling out for your teammate to kill adds. Then find a group of adds and wait for your teammate to give the kill call out, spawning their next Mintar. Then go solo eyes and after that, grab your second set of motes and attempt to kill adds in order to spawn your teammate's next mantar. Then, let your teammate know that you're on your way to the relay. After depositing at the relay, turn around and kill supplicants to ensure that your teammate's mantar after that spawns. Attempting to make as many special finishers as possible and wait for your teammate to arrive for damage. For second phase, it's the same exact rotation, just attempt to be a little bit quicker. Damage is probably one of, if not the most important parts of this encounter, not to mention the most fun. Here are examples of both a double slug rotation as well as a very simple Izzy rocket rotation done by me. I will also be showing a more advanced dragon shadow rotation done by Achilles. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it is in some way helpful. If you have any questions feel free to ask me either in the comments or on discord or if you would like to run the duo I will hopefully find some way to help out. Good luck with the duo and stay safe out there. Also if you are at all interested in seeing full runs of either 10 mote or 20 mote I've linked both of the POVs in the description if you are interested in those. Stay safe out there. Good luck.